Speaker, and I'm very pleased to rise today and speak to Bill C-71, an act to amend certain acts and regulations in relation to firearms. I have many concerns with this piece of legislation, but as there is limited time, I would like to focus my re remarks today on what I consider to be a shocking oversight. I believe that all of us in this place would agree that it must be the highest priority of a government to protect the lives and safety of their constituents, of, of the people that they are serving. Of all our duties, this is the most profound. In order to protect our citizens, to put effective solutions in place, it is vitally important that we understand the problem. In this case, to recognize who is committing the violent crimes within Canada. And I believe there is a simple answer to that question, and it is gangs. In 2016, one of every two firearms-related homicides was committed by organized crime. Yet nowhere in this bill are the words gang or organized crime mentioned. At best, this is an unintentional oversight. At its worst, it is intentional. After all, the Minister of Public Safety and Emergency Preparedness himself spoke about this issue earlier this year on March 8th, and I quote, criminal gun and gang violence is a grave threat to the safety of our communities. While overall crime rates in Canada are much lower than decades ago, homicides, gun crime, and gang activity have all been steadily increasing. Gun homicides have almost doubled over the past four years, and more than half are linked to gangs. Before continuing, I want to address one point about this statement. Mr. Speaker, statistics can provide a good basis for solid policy, but only if they are seen within their proper context. And I believe the minister did not provide that proper context. The minister chose to use a particular timeline in the quote above, four years. As made clear by his office, the year he is referencing is actually 2013. And I ask, why is that significant? The minister made the claim that gun homicides have almost doubled over the past four years. That statement is very misleading when placed into context. 2013 happens to have the lowest number of firearms homicide ever recorded by Statistics Canada. The next closest year on record, 1998, has 13% more homicides. The Liberals chose 2013 as a base year to make it appear as if gun homicides were growing at a shocking rate. Now the Liberals are using these statistics to justify punishing highly vetted, law-abiding gun owners by painting a picture of Canada as the Wild West. But an unbiased look at the numbers reveals a different story. If there is to be any comparison to the Wild West, it would have to be our ongoing struggle with gang violence. In 2016, gang members committed 114 firearms homicides compared to 134 total homicides in 2013, the year referenced by the minister. That is a shocking statistic, no matter how it is viewed. The minister noted that gang-related firearm homicides made up half of all firearms homicides in 2016. This is significantly above average and, in, and is a cause for concern. So how is it that after recognizing the central role of organized crime in firearms murders on March 8th, the minister introduces a bill just days later that ignores organized crime? Further, not only have the Liberals failed to meaningfully address gang violence in this bill, but in its companion piece, Bill C-75, they are weakening the laws currently in place to combat gang violence. Bill C-75 amends the criminal code to lessen the sentences for serious and even violent crimes to as little as a fine. Among those crimes is the participation in organized criminal activity. In other words, joining a gang. What is the justification for lowering the legal penalties for gang members while punishing legal firearms owners? I cannot think of one. Yet time and time again, the Liberals have gone after legal firearms owners rather than the criminals who use firearms. 
a gang member, or other criminals are not going to be deterred by a law that further restricts legal firearms owners. They will only respond to laws that hold serious consequences for their illegal activities. The government had two opportunities to address the significant problem of gang violence, a problem that, as I mentioned above, the minister is very well aware of. Yet they failed to do so. They failed by weakening the punishment for gang activities and again by not making changes to our firearms laws that would target gangs. Mr. Speaker, not only does C-71 do nothing to address gang violence, but it misses the mark on rural crime as well. My riding of Carleton Trail, Eagle Creek, is a large and mostly rural riding. I have heard numerous concerns from constituents about the growing issue of rural crime. This place recognized the severity of that issue and unanimously passed the motion brought forward by my colleague from Lakeland, M my colleague from Lakeland, M167. That motion will result in a committee study of rural crime. Every lim Liberal member who was present voted for the motion, including the Prime Minister. Surely that must mean the government understands that there are unique problems faced by rural Canadians. Yet nothing in this bill addresses rural crime. Instead, Bill C-71 targets law-abiding firearm owners by, among other things, breaking their election promise and reintroducing the wasteful and divisive long gun registry through the back door. In this bill, the Liberals have introduced a backdoor registry by requiring firearms retailers to keep a registry of every firearm they sell for 20 years, and by requiring private transfers to be verified by the registrar of firearms. This should come as no shock, but registrars keep registries. Firearms retailers will now be required to act as registrars themselves. They will be responsible for the cost of maintaining this information and for the security of that information. The private and personal information of millions of Canadians must, by law, be kept by a business for 20 years. These registries will be accessible by law enforcement and must be turned over to the government if the retailer goes out of business. A registry by any other name. The Liberals will now continue to refuse to use the term registry because they know how upset Canadians are about the last Liberal long gun registry. They think that by not naming it and obscuring its location, Canadians won't notice. They are wrong. I have heard from hundreds of constituents who are frustrated that the Liberals have broken their campaign promise and reintroduced the firearms registry. They feel betrayed by this government. They are disgusted that the Liberals would try to hide their broken promise behind technicalities and muddied language. They deserve better than to be treated like criminals. In closing, Mr. Speaker, I believe that we as parliamentarians have the responsibility to create laws that protect our citizens, that reflect real world data, objective data, that treat law-abiding Canadians fairly, and that address the concerns of Canadians regarding crime and gang violence. This bill does not meet any of those requirements. For this reason, Mr. Speaker, I cannot and will not support Bill C-71. Thank you.